Hey guys, welcome to Simplewash Builds. Today I'm going to show you how I went from a 3D printed piece to this finished Halo Needler. And uh, let's get started. Okay guys, today I want to show you how I go from something like this to something that's post print but you know during my work process would look something similar to this um, and then a final product which is going to be uh, having a completely smooth surface and painting and everything else so this is one of my final products that I've done this is a death stroke mask um, this is just one of many that I've done but over my 3d printing career I've learned a few tricks and trades um, and so that's what I want to show you guys today is how to take that from raw print to something finished and just go through the whole process and the methods that I use to get it that way. <clears throat> okay, so first thing you're gonna need is some sandpaper. Um, I usually use 120 um, to start and then I'll go to something a little smoother like a 320 or maybe a 200. Um, but what I like to do first is to sand the plastic parts and this knocks down some of the layer lines. It's not gonna make it super smooth, but it will knock down some of it. And it also gets off a lot of the plastic burrs that build up when it's printing. So we're gonna go ahead and um, sand this guy down. Okay, so the very next thing I do after I do the initial sanding and kind of rough up the surface and get it fairly smooth is I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of primer on it and I use the uh, Rust-Oleum Primer Filler, which I know a lot of 3D printing people out there use that and it's a pretty common product. So uh, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, so I lay down a couple of coats of this stuff and then I take it back to the table and I'll show you what we do next. guys so after the first uh, coat of the filler primer I normally come back to the desk and this is when I start trying to fill in the uh, lines but before I do that I normally will go over the prints with a razor and the reason I do this is it's to um, cut in any like detailed lines that you have but it's also to shave off any imperfections or like plastic buildup that happened during the print um, which I find is 90% of the time you'll have stuff like that. So this, this straight razor will just kind of cut it right off and uh, then it gives you a lot cleaner surface to, uh, to start sanding and laying down our, um, what we're gonna use is called spot putty. So let me uh, zoom in and show you guys what I do with the blade and we'll keep going, going from there. Okay, so what I like to do with the blade is to go over the piece um, and cut off any like imperfections or little burrs that stick out that you really don't want to waste a ton of time trying to sand off. Um, a lot of times you'll have stuff like this around the seam line. So this is a seam line where I glued the two pieces together. Um, before I apply my glazing putty, I normally will just run the blade and cut off anything like, like see that was a piece of uh, glue that was uneven. So I'll just kind of pass this on here cut off anything that's like sticking up and then after I got that it makes it a lot less crap you have to try to sand off with uh, with the glazing putty it's 
the in, inside any kind of like detail lines if you want to if you want to run your blade through and make sure there's no obstructions and so as you spray more and more of the filler primer on the piece you have to continuously go back with a razor or a, or a needle file and like open up these little details or else they'll get filled in over time with the spraying of the uh, paint see this is a good example um, of a piece of plastic that is just like that was formed during the print so this kind of thing you can just kind of just cut it right off see and that um, that's basically what I what I do so I'll go around the whole thing and cut off any kind of pieces that are protruding try to make it as smooth as I can get it with the blade Now everybody has their own technique when it comes to this and I've watched a ton of people on YouTube, you know, best ways to smooth out PLA. Um, I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of that is just bull. I think that the best way to smooth out PLA is with uh, a razor and sandpaper. <clears throat> so I have not found any magic solution. I've used the X, um, XTC 3D uh, that resin that you mix and you put on the plastic piece and supposedly that that le self leveling and that in my experience that stuff just doesn't work um I have a better result by just taking my time sanding shaving it, you know that's basically what I do so I'm gonna go through and do the razor piece with all the rest of these parts and then we'll come back and I'll show you what my next step is in my process. Okay, so once I'm done with the blade, um, the next thing I'll normally do is do a quick pass with some sandpaper. I usually use a rougher grit uh, for this part. So um, for this, like this here is a uh, 120, I believe. Yeah, 120 uh, grit paper. Um, just pass it over it real quick. That's going to get down some of the roughness from the primer. And the reason it's kind of rough is because you sanded it before you primed it with the paint. Um, when you sand it before the plastic kind of burrs up and, it, and then when you paint it, it gives it a rough texture. But if you hit it with some sandpaper now, <clears throat> after you've done the razor blade stuff, it should come out a lot smoother. Um, and then from there, we'll start doing some of the finer uh, detail smoothing. So real quick, we'll just sand this down. And you don't have to go He-Man with it. You want to leave, as you can see, you want to leave some of that gray. Um, you actually see the differences in the layers here. You can see that the, the lighter areas are where the plastic is raised and the dark gray stays below to fill in the cracks. So that's, that's really what we want. So we just want to kind of hit it like that all the way around. And so your sandpaper will get like blocked up. So normally what I'll do every now and then, I'll just pluck it and it gets rid of a lot of that stuff. And if that doesn't work, you can take it on a piece of wood and just kind of go with a clockwise circle. And that helps break up some of that <clears throat> some of that paint dust so okay guys so after the sanding um, the first thing that I do after that is going to be really the part that starts smoothing it out um, this is probably the most important part of trying to get a PLA printed piece completely smooth so you have your piece um, what you need to get is this Bondo glazing spot putty so I've tried everything that anybody has said inside of the 3D printing forums. I've tried wood filler. I've tried uh, XTC 3D. I've tried Bondo, the, the regular fiberglass Bondo. Um, all of those are, they either take too long to dry before you can start sanding or they're too difficult to sand back down. And so it causes, I mean, it just takes you forever to finish a piece and you have to work twice as hard. This stuff dries really fast and it's super easy to sand and it'll fill in pretty much any imperfection that you can think of. I mean, I've filled in some pretty large um, gapes with this stuff and it works well. So um, I'm gonna show you how I apply it and uh, then you guys can use it to smooth out your prints like I do. Okay, so 
first off, get you some of this Bondo glazing spot putty. I bought it on Amazon. You can buy it in the large tubes like this. This tube will last me a long time. I mean, um, it doesn't take a lot. You apply it real thin. So one big tube like this will last you a while. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is I like to have a wet rag handy because I use my finger to apply it and I like to wipe my finger on the rag when I'm um, between applying it. So you're basically going to open this guy up, squeeze some out, I mean that much, and then you're going to want to just smear it over the whole piece. So you smear this thing down and you got to push hard because you want it to be a real thin, thin, thin coat. And then that is going to make it I'm telling you, when you when you sand this stuff, it's super slick. I mean, it's, and so you apply it all the way to the edge, smear it down, smear it down. It's a little time consuming, um, but I mean, you get the hang of it and it really, it's not very hard to do. Um, so like bigger seams like this, I mean, you just, you fill it in and I mean, it. You come back and sand it later, and it. You. It may take you three or four goes at it. Um, so you know, you're not going to get everything on one pass. It generally does take me three, four times of um, applying this, sanding it, uh, hitting it with some more spray primer, the filler primer that we sprayed it with, um, and then coming back and doing this again. But that's what you, I mean, that's just the name of the game for getting um, super smooth prints. Um, I'll put a link in the description on, you know, where to buy this stuff at on Amazon, just so that you're making sure you, you're getting the right stuff. They, they do have other colors. I've seen some guys use, um, you know, different brands. One of them is like pink. This one's kind of a, I don't know, burgundy red, um, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're going to paint over it anyways. Uh, but the beauty of this stuff is it dries so fast. So, I mean, put it on here, 10 minutes, you come back, and it's ready to sand. Now, I will say this. If you put it on real thick in certain areas, like if you're trying to fill a hole or something, um, it may take a little longer for it to dry. So, I mean, sometimes I'll come in here, I'll apply this to, like, all my pieces, and then I'll come back tomorrow and... Um, come back and revisit it and then and then I'll you know sand it down so you don't necessarily have to do it right after it dries I mean you can, you can wait a day depending on um, I guess just how fast you want to finish but as you can see though I'm applying it to the whole thing what you want to be careful with though when you're doing this is you don't want to put it inside of any um, detail lines so you want to try to avoid those sometimes you do accidentally get it in there and what I'll do is if I do accidentally get it in there I'll take either my razor or a needle file like this line for example and I would just run my run my needle file down this line to make sure that it that it stays prominent and if you get this stuff in there you just do the same thing and it comes right out I mean it's not this stuff's really easy to work with and it, it sands super smooth. Um, I haven't used, I haven't seen anybody use this stuff really the way I do. I've tried messaging a few people on Facebook and other things trying to get people just to try it because I'm, I, in my experience, this is by far the best method to get it smooth. They, they do, you know, people try to buy those X3, XTC 3D stuff and it really, I mean, that's just because I think that they're just not lazy, but they don't want to sit here and do this for hours, which I get it, but at the same time, that's the price you pay for a, a good looking piece. So I'm going to fast forward the video and apply this to a bunch of pieces and you can just kind of watch me do it.
Hey guys, um, so we're back. I uh, finished applying the glazing putty to the entire piece. Um, so once you're finished, they'll be pretty much completely coated with a thin layer of it. And then we're gonna sand them and then we'll hit them again with some more um, filler primer. So I normally have to do this two, maybe three times, but uh, it all depends on how well the print is starting out. So I'll, uh, we'll start sanding and um, then we'll do the second coat of primer. <clears throat> so when I do my sanding on this, I normally will start out with a, a 180, uh, 180 grip and I buy the paper that has the the uh, wax backing on it because I find that it lasts longer than the regular paper kind. So um, take 180, just hit this guy and you'll see how easy this stuff comes right off. And I mean the point is not to pull it all off because you want it to fill in the layer lines. That's, that's what we're trying to do here. But you do want to knock it down and you want to make sure you don't have any like bulges or um, areas that were built up. Okay guys, so after you finish um, sanding down the spot putty, your part should look something like this. Um, you should be able to see the gray primer underneath the areas that were raised. And um, so once you've got the first layer sanded like this, we'll hit it with another thing of primer. And then uh, you repeat the whole process again until you get a smooth surface. And then you're ready for wet sanding. Let's go uh, prime it again. I'm lucky enough to have a uh, ventilation hood that I made with a, with a fan that sucks the fumes out. If you don't have this, I would do it outside or um, in a well ventilated area and you probably need to wear a mask if you're gonna not have a forced exit of the fumes. Okay guys, so we've, uh, I've put another layer of the spot putty filler on the pieces. Uh, so this is the second layer of the filler I'm going to sand it down and then I'm going to spray it again with some more um, filler primer. And then after that, I think we'll have most of the layer lines out and we can start wet sanding it for that final smooth finish. Um, once I finish wet sanding it, then you start getting ready to paint. So um, I'm going to move on with that and I'll show you guys as soon as I'm finished. All right, guys. So I've got the second coat of um, filler primer on there after we did the second iteration of the um, spot putty. So now the parts are looking really good, really smooth. Um, there may be some few areas I need to add a little spot putty, but you kind of got to take that as it comes. But some of these pieces are looking super nice. So um, the next step that I normally do is wet sand it. So to wet sand, I normally grab a bucket of water like this, um, and I use some 320 grit uh, sandpaper with the wax backing because it doesn't absorb the water as, as much so your paper lasts a little longer, tear off a piece. And basically I will just dip it in the water, um, soak my hand and just sand this. And uh, I'll do it for a minute here so you can see. And I do that to all the pieces. And then after that, you're pretty much ready to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this piece and uh, we'll go on from there. This is how you get that super, super smooth look. You know, when you put pictures of your stuff online, you see people who got these 3D prints that are super smooth. Yeah, it's because they took the time to wet sand it. Wet sanding is definitely the only way to get it looking super smooth.
and you don't really have to do it too hard. You kind of actually want to hit it because you don't want to take off a lot of material. You just want to smooth the surface out. So you don't want to sit there and sand away all the top coat that you just put on. You're just trying to smooth it off. Make sure to keep wet the paper because if you don't, it will start to gum up, but the water helps it keep from doing that. I'm gonna finish sanding all the other ones, wet sanding, and um, after that, guys, we'll start with the painting process and how I do that, and uh, we'll get this piece finished. Thank you.